we're having a Living Shorelines 101 um, seminar uh, being uh, two, we have two speakers which are Jen Dinger and Eric Buell from the University of Maryland Sea Grant program uh, they'll be giving a joint one hour talk on Living Shorelines um, both specialists in that area and then we'll be visiting Camp Pocomath which is a project that was constructed by Unity Landscape Design Build um, a year and a half ago and it was a joint project with the Chester River Association and funded by the Chesapeake Bay Trust. Um, so we're going to visit that site after the talk and I will be available on site to talk about that project and answer questions. In nature, many living shorelines exist, uh, which is uh, often just titled as a marsh, um, but it's a diverse system of plants that are uh, stabilizing soil and they occur naturally typically in a stable site um, but in along the Chesapeake Bay and rivers and tributaries there's many uh, eroding shorelines and for various reasons some are natural processes some are man-made being boats um, and construction shore like a surface erosion which is often a net, which is a natural process and also a process that is uh, done you know, created by farming and clearing of land, uh, which which causes runoff and erosion from the surface. Um, so a living shoreline is a combination of different systems. Uh, often it's done with just plant material, um, which is in, put in place. Uh, some of the systems are sand and plant material depending on the amount of uh, activity from, from uh, the protection of the site. So if the site's very protected, you can do that uh, without the use of a, a rock armor or biologs or other means of uh, physical breaking of the uh, activity on the water. This workshop the 101 is for anyone who is has an interest and it could be uh, a tw if you have 10 foot of shoreline and you know, a tree fell down and you're worried about is that going to wash away or if you have if you're a county and you're dealing with thousands of feet of shoreline that have different degrees of erosion uh, this will give a basic understanding of what can be done what type of applications are available and uh, and also a discussion about some resources that are available out to, to help um, pay for them or at least for uh, information and technical advice. Uh, another project that's in development here at the nursery is a sacred geometry based uh, activities space and food production and demonstration uh, plots. So we will be pro uh, producing food for sale at the nursery, all chemical free, and also educating people on how uh, different methods of growing food uh, via raised planters, different materials they can use to build um, trellises and planters, and also uh, integration of companion plants, uh, which is joining plants together that assist one another in either um, reducing the need for fertilizers, reducing the need for pesticides, and uh, also some some plants will actually benefit one another by growing together and be more productive plants. Um, the center of the air, the garden is, is a yin yang design, which will be uh, where activities are held, uh, music presentations, uh, skits poetry, uh, anything that uh, creative, uh, inspirational space for artists um, and trying to bring in local artists, obviously, and then also um, a wide range of people from, from a distance as well. Um, so the basis of the main activity center is the fruit of life which are all, um, all the sacred geometries are, are circles, uh, overlapping circles and different patterns that create uh, patterns which all 
appear to be like what you would find in nature in flowers, um, in atoms, in our basic building blocks of life. Um, so it seemed very appropriate to incorporate into this garden project and we've incorporated all of the main, uh, the, the basic uh, fruit of life, seed of life, egg of life, and flower of life uh, in different areas in our project that are appropriate to that space. So I'm using a uh, program called Workaway, which is an online site. It's a worldwide site of people that are uh, hosts and our participants of, uh, who are interested in learning about uh, different. So I have a project. I posted it on Workaway. I said I'm building a food production demonstration garden based in permaculture techniques and design, uh, which is a universal term that basically you know is sustainable agriculture using collecting water, not using chemicals, and growing. Um, sustainably producing food. So I have that posted and recently had like the first group, well first person was a, a girl Estelle from France who was phenomenal. She came in and has a lot of, in, uh, she's a writer but also takes care of gardens in from, uh, Brittany, France where she lives. And she was very enthusiastic worked with me on creating the terraces on our garden, taught her how to use some machines that we had, which she was very excited about and uh, picked up immediately. And then while she was here, I had two, uh, a couple from Chile who were architects, they contacted me and said they were in the DC and could come as soon as the next day. So I said, okay come on and then they arrived I, I met them picked them up and they stayed for a week Estelle for two weeks and then while they were here another girl from the Netherlands who just arrived at the University of Maryland for starting her PhD she is a, a writer and a researcher and with a lot of she's been all over the world and worked in a lot of sustainable gardens and permaculture studies it was came and work, stayed for four days also. So at the, I had four people from all these backgrounds and they basically worked here uh, helping build the garden but doing a lot of development on the plans for the project, which was phenomenal.